All right. All right. Our next speaker then today is Mark Collier from Secure Logic speaking to Call Security and Trust. Mark. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Mark Collier. I'm the Chief Technology Officer or CTO at Secure Logics. And today I'm going to talk about several SBIR research projects we're performing or have performed or are performing with DHS in the area of call and communication security or next generation 911. So here's the issue, um, and here's a, an example article sent out by the FBI a little while ago about this time last year. There's another article coming out or bulletin from CISA pretty soon. And it's basically covering one of several attacks that we're seeing in next generation 911 in public safety namely telephony denial service or TDOS, which is a flood of inbound calls uh, into 911 or really any contact center. Um, we're also working to detect other issues like swatting and robocalls, but TDOS is really the focus. Um, we're seeing attacks uh, tied to one particular bad actor overseas. Uh, this actor is affecting and attacking both 911 and public safety. The attacks are becoming more common. The techniques are becoming more sophisticated and the impact is becoming greater. Um, and it's affecting not only 911, but also public safety and municipal organizations like sheriff's offices, because they oftentimes uh, will transfer uh, inbound calls to 911, um, you know, as a general practice and perhaps uh, after hours. So the organizations that would benefit from this include Next Generation 911 itself uh, and also DHS. DHS has a program called uh, EC3 designed to be sort of a SOC across 911 across the country or regions. And that's another uh, organization or capability that we also anticipate being helped. And as I mentioned, uh, public safety, sheriff's offices, city offices have 311 and, and other numbers that you can call from anywhere in the world. And calls into these numbers are often transferred to 911 again after hours or as a normal course of practice. So uh, this particular attacker, that's where they started. They started by attacking uh, public safety and law enforcement and have since moved directly to 911. And I'll talk about that. So there's quite a bit of very good technology out there in the 911 space, including sophisticated call handling systems from Motorola and Trotto and others, but they really don't have the ability to detect TDOS and sophisticated attacks. Uh, you have some newer vendors like Rapid SOS that's focused on mobile uh, and other, or other instrumentation, wearables and so on, but they also don't have the ability to detect these kinds of attacks. And lastly, you have major service providers like AT&T, they're providing EziNet and other services to next generation 911. But again, they're not really in the business of detecting TDOS and other types of attacks. So this slide is a little busy, but it describes a particular uh, scenario that we've started to see lately. Uh, as I said, and this is covered in the middle of the slide, these attacks sort of started with public safety sheriff's offices, municipal organizations where the attacker was using their 10 digit published numbers to try to find back doors or other ways into 911. Since then, they figured out how to directly attack 911. Uh, they're using voice over IP and emergency services capabilities and have figured out how to target their calls to really any uh, 911 organization or PSAP that they want. And a particular signature they've been using lately uh, as they're using this capability to conference in call takers across multiple PSAPs. So there was an attack a little while ago where call takers at PSAPs across four states were getting calls. They were all conferenced in together. And you can imagine uh, having multiple call takers hearing themselves talking and it's very confusing and it's designed uh, not only to confuse the call takers, but try to keep them on the phone a little bit longer than normal. Fortunately, the particular signature didn't involve enough calls to really create a significant disruption, but all they would have to do is generate, you know, 10 or 100 of these calls and the result would be very, very disruptive. 
So Secure Logics, in, in summary, what Secure Logics does, and we always start with our production products when we do a research project because we think that greatly increases the chances of transition uh, and ease of piloting. So our base product is just like you have capability on the data side and your internet connection, uh, firewalls, intrusion prevention systems, content monitoring. We do very similar things for the voice connection. So. 911 has uh, access from AT&T, Verizon, and other service providers for inbound calls, texts, et cetera. We deploy technology on that connection to monitor it, look for malicious calls, authenticate calls, watch for TDOS spoofing, and, and other issues. So as I said, anytime we start a research project, we start with one of our production solutions. So in this case, we, we started with that same solution. It's called a Policy Guru, uh, which is a premise component. And then we have a, a fully cloud-based component that we actually developed on a previous CIBR with DHS called Orchestra One. So if you, if you peer into a next generation 911 deployment, uh, we deploy a passive SIP probe and that lets us get all the SIP and the voice metadata, the audio, text information, and in the future, images and video. And that's deployed perhaps in a next generation 911 ESINet, maybe a customer data center, or even a PSAP, really anywhere where they have voice. And, and in the future, in, uh, we have an optional component that lets us do call control, but honestly, our pilot partners and others really haven't deployed that yet because they're hesitant to, to terminate calls yet. And then those components send all the interesting information to our cloud service uh, called Orchestra One. And that's where we do all the sophisticated TDOS detection, swatting detection, spoofing, authentication. Uh, it's also where we're planning to send multimedia data like text and images and video. And that's where all the interesting analysis takes place. We score the call, uh, we aggregate attack information across multiple sites. Uh, we send information scores back to the premise in case the uh, customer wants to treat the calls or maybe present information to a call taker. And then lastly, like I show in the lower right, we visualize that on a couple of dashboards. We, we've got an integration with Entrato. Uh, we're working on an integration with Rapid SOS, and we're also building our own dashboard um, for possible use or, or maybe future use in something like the EC3. Uh, in addition to the base TDOS detection and working on multimedia information, uh, we're also building a, a modeling tool that a 911 decision maker can use to say, well, what happens if I'm getting this type of attack? What if it's a widespread attack across my region? What if it's targeting for, uh, specific PSAPs? How do I best mitigate that? What, what's the best course of action so they can do training and figure out how to deal with this issue before they experience it in the wild in real time. Some of the performance specifications, first of all, TDOS and any attack detection has to be extremely accurate. Uh, you never want to flag uh, a legitimate call as malicious. So, and, and these attackers are getting smarter and sp smarter. They're spoofing the calling number and other information. Uh, they're starting to use other forms of media like text. So the detection has to be essentially perfectly accurate and also distinguish something like a, a flood of malicious, malicious calls, maybe from a, a legitimate mass calling event that, that looks like a TDOS, but is, is legitimate, but involves a lot of back, uh, volume. Uh, needs to support multimedia. Uh, right now, most 911 communications is still voice, but text is becoming more common. And the public expects to interact with 911 using images and video uh, going forward. So uh, those are going to be really important in the future, but unfortunately, they, they carry the burden of possibly enabling additional attacks, malicious code, or even just being like a long video or something that would take a call taker uh, an unreasonable amount of time to dig through to pull out the pertinent information. Uh, you need some form of mitigation because you'll want to treat these calls, maybe reroute them, reprioritize re them in certain queues, or in very unusual cases, actually terminate them. And lastly, 
Uh, you want to put information up to the call taker and also the decision maker so that they know how severe this attack is, where it's targeting, uh, what it looks like, how to best respond, uh, and do that at a PSAP level region or even within the uh, EC3 concept. Talked about this a little bit earlier, but you know, compared to some of the solutions out there, you know, the main call handling equipment vendors like Entrato or Motorola offer fantastic technology, but they really don't offer TDOS and other types of attack detection. Same is true for some of the upcoming vendors like Rapid SOS that do some some related things, but are, are more, more focused on mobile calls and other sources of data. And lastly, AT and and some of the providers of ESI nets, which front end next generation 911, are also not offering TDOS detection with those offerings and, and really don't want to get in the business of treating calls anyway. Okay, where we are in terms of development? Well, again, we started with a production solution, which is a TRL level nine. Um, and we have that solution available now for public safety organizations like sheriff's offices and municipal city organizations. Uh, a passive version that works in next generation 911 and deals with the quirks of ANI and location and so on is at a TRL level eight and is currently deployed at three large pilot sites. Uh, the Orchestra One cloud-based solution is available. It's actually production and the 911 enhancements are implemented and also deployed at those pilot sites, and that's at a TRL level six. And the newer support for multimedia, text, uh, images, and video is in research right now. It'll be implemented into the same infrastructure. Uh, hopefully it will be piloted as well. And right now that's a, at a TRL level four. So let me wrap with a little bit of information about Secure Logic. So we've been in this business for about 20 years. Our focus is on securing critical voice and communications into public safety, government, and enterprise. Uh, we've got public safety customers. We've got some of the largest banks in the country where we're processing as much as a billion calls per year. Uh, DOD uh, widely deployed throughout government. Uh, and lastly, uh, we have a more than five year uh, history of working with DHS s and and CISA, uh, a significant amount of funding. It's been fantastic because it's allowed us to do research and concept exploration to get into our products. And we have several products that are now generally available uh, as a result of this research. So who would we like to engage with? Well, first of all, the 911 and next generation 911 customers themselves, uh, and also uh, DHS CISA Emergency Communications Division and EC3. Uh, we would not only like to see this capability to continue to be deployed in public safety organizations, 911, uh, but also for uh, for a role in protecting communication security within EC3. So that's it. Uh, here's my contact information. Again, my name is Mark Collier. I'm the CTO and PI and, and run our research program. There's my phone number and my uh, email address. And you can also find Secure Logics at www.securelogics.com. Thank you, and Chris, uh, I will open it up for questions. All right, thank you very much, Mark. Very interesting. All right, we have a first question came in. Uh, are there additional issues present with next gen 911 multimedia that this technology would address or could address? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, you can certainly see TDOS getting worse with something like text. Uh, it's it's easy to generate text messages. It's pretty anonymous. So there's some existing uh, areas uh, like swatting, for example. Maybe somebody sends in a, a, a video that is designed to uh, make diversion of resources more effective than it would be if it was just a voice call. So multimedia, including text, images, and video might make some existing issues like TDOS and swatting worse. Also, uh, with something like uh, images or video where you have a lot of 
a lot of data, it's possible that you might embed some malware in there, maybe a link or so if a call taker um, is working with an unfiltered image or video and accidentally clicks or does something on the wrong thing, it's possible that that would be a, a way of introducing a virus or some sort of malware leading to ransomware or something like that. So, um, you know, summary answer, uh, multimedia has the potential to make some existing issues worse and it has the potential to introduce some new issues as well. All right, great. Thanks, Mark. Uh, next question then is, can you describe how your solutions are deployed for NextGen 911 and administrative networks? Yes, absolutely. So, so uh, in an administrative network like a sheriff's office or city, you know, municipal organization, we, we have basically the same type of technology. So they will have access trunking from a Verizon or AT&T or whoever. And we put a very similar product on that trunking access, uh, and, and that's what's used to detect TDOS, robocalls, or, or spoofing, or other types of issue. It's a, it's a very similar solution, uh, does very similar things. Um, one advantage uh, that the administrative solution has, because we use two different products that do very similar things, is that it also supports TDM networks. Um, we find that, you know, everybody is migrating to voice over IP and SIP, but a lot of uh, public safety organizations are, are a little bit slower in that migration. They still have older TDM technology. So uh, we also have an option to cover that. And, and by the way, as a result of this attack, we probably helped as many as 50 organizations uh, deploy that technology because they were they were being actively attacked by this uh, one actor. All right, thank you, Mark. All right, looks like we have a minute left. If anyone has a final question for Mark, I, I have a question for Mark. Um, Mark, does does the dog have a role in the technology development, or um, are they, you know, strictly for emotional support? What's that? <laughs> My cat? <laughs> yeah, the dog. Your dog. We could hear the jangling in the background. It's actually a it's actually a Bengal cat. Oh. That I locked out. Managed to get in. <laughs> <laughs> They're sneaky. Yeah. Uh, no, I would not categorize that as emotional support. It's <laughs> <laughs> All right. But well, thank you. Somehow. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> All right. Sounds good, Mark. All right. Well, thank you very much and have a great day. All right. Thank you very much.